G'day and welcome to this episode. Uh, finally, I'm at the shed. So it's been a month of preparation, moving back and forth. And you know, I'm sorry I haven't. Um, I'm sorry I haven't uh, delivered an episode before that, but it's just impossible to to do it with all the work that uh, I've had to do. So moved house, moved shed, moved office, all in one big hit. Um, an hour and a half away from where I was. So it's been a big uh, big change in uh for everything for my life and um and for the shed so and for the build but finally i'm here and i'm excited to to show you guys uh what's in store behind me um so let's get into it See if we can push it right up the ramp onto this uh, trailer and then get a transfer. All right, so here it is. I'm going to take you on a, uh, a little tour. Um, so come with me. A little bit of a camera camera wall. So I'll start by uh, showing you the power source. So where we've moved is completely off, off grid. So I'm relying on uh, the sun's energy to power everything you see here. Um, and at the moment, um, there's 16 panels on the roof and it's a acid gel battery set, battery array backed up with a... Um, petrol uh, 7.2 kilowatt system uh, petrol generator. So what happens is uh, when the inverter, uh, the inverter controls everything that you see here. Um, and when we've got a sunny day, the battery levels will indicate full. So at the moment we're full and we're on float, which means we've got free energy. So without getting too, too much into it, that's the battery set there. That's the generator and that's the inverter, which powers everything that you see in this shed, plus the house just down the hill there. So anyway, follow me. Um, so with the last shed that I was renting out in a place called Rochford, um, obviously because I was renting, I couldn't really do too, too much to it. So here, it's because it's mine, I can have the ability to start decking it out. So here, for now, I've just got some, um, some storage. Um, this is pretty much will just be extra, extra gear, paint, uh, tools that I'm not using all the time. Down here, these are uh, where the well, 19 mil um, cupboards that I've had made, and um, they're good because they've got on a trolley system, so I can just wheel these around, and um, really good for storing stuff. Um, you know, a lot of storage space inside, which is great. I've got the Sparky to come in and start fitting out all the power points. So I've got I've tried to put power points in all the, uh, the spots that I, I really will need them. Coming from that last shed where it was just running from one extension lead, this is like heaven. I don't know if a lot of anyone knows, but I do have a, another car, which is a 996, uh, 911, and that will eventually get some builds on. I'm gonna, I'm gonna lower that in the, an upcoming episode with some coilovers and things like that. So it's a 1998 model. Um, so far, I've just done exhaust, hack on it, and- um, Eggies. <laughs> Yeah, egg lights. Um, and it's got some 19 inch rims on it. So enough of that, let's get to the, uh, the project. Um, this is great here because I've got access. I've got rear access here as well, which is awesome. So I can come and go 
uh, with the other cars if I need to. And when it comes time to spraying or um, hosing down or sandblasting, I can wheel it out here and do all that work out here um, and without going through the main door, which is great. Eventually, I'll concrete all this so I can actually get the cars out here without getting gravel back into the garage. Um, as I said, the power is, uh, is still being done, but I'm gonna be having three fluorescent lights here, which will light this booth area, which is gonna be the spray booth area, plus the workshop area for the ute. I've got um, power, power there on that pole, I've got power here. This is where the engine is for now. I'll have an engine stand there eventually, and um, when it gets to the engine time, I'll have that sent off. Uh, another power, I've gone berserk on the power because I, I reckon you can never have enough power. I'm gonna introduce this as part of the, uh, the build as well, but this is a uh, electric winch. It's operated up to 800 kilos, and I'm making a bracket right now which will, um, is going to be a bracket system. So this electric winch is gonna be hanging from that roof. And I'm gonna be using that to winch the body off the chassis. We've got 15 amp power there. And then I'm gonna put another 15 amp power, which is gonna be dedicated to the um, air compressor. Um, and then I'm gonna have industrial lighting. We've got two uh, old industrial styles um, light fittings, which will go one on the mezzanine level and one here. And they're only 70 watt each, so. Yeah, it's not going to be uh, overly uh, draining on the on the solar system. And finally, I've got the rotisserie, which is uh, the newest addition to the um, to the workshop. So I've assembled this. I will go into this um, in greater detail, but um, this was uh, bought and picked up from a company called DMT. I think they're called DMT Trading, um, and I did tell the guy. If you do need a rotisserie, tell him that I sent you. And that's this. I'm not getting anything out of it, but I just want to see how many people go from uh, seeing this video. So I bought this for 950 bucks, I think it was, which is the cheapest one I can find. And for some reason, he can't uh, sell them quick enough. So they're running out the door for some reason. Everyone wants to uh, do up cars at the moment. And rotisseries are rare as hen's teeth. Anyway, so this one's good. I've got to figure out a bracket system to actually I bought the rotisserie, but then I've realized that I've got no idea how to actually attach it to the body. Um, so I've got to do a, a bracket system onto the body and then that will eventually lift the car, lift the body off the chassis and then I can start working on, on, the, on the body as a 360. Um, come on up. This mezzanine level is um, worth its weight in gold. Um, there's a lot of crap up here at the moment, but essentially this is where I'm gonna store all the spare parts. So I've got all the, all the panels, um, radiator, inner guards, nose cone, bumper bars, uh, rear lights, heater, plenum, old plenum, another nose guard, the radiator shroud, uh, windows, seats, the two doors, tailgate, um, and then over there you've got the, the guards and the bonnet. I'm gonna I'm gonna have a bit more of a tidy system here, so we can all tidy it up. But for now, I mean that's heaps better than where it was uh, before. So that's pretty much it. Um, yeah, I'm really happy with it. It's uh, it's going to be an absolute dream to to work in this in this shed compared to the last one. And um, I'm just got to fit out the lights, as I said, and then I'm ready to go. Okay, so I've been uh, having a go at this um, this bracket all day to try and get this uh, winch, this hoist put on the mezzanine. Um, the whole time I've been doing it, I've been umming and ahhing whether it's uh, a bad idea or not, because I know that the C-sections, uh, which are the, the carbon or hardened steel, and you know, they're meant to be uh, weight bearing to a certain extent, but it's certainly not, you know, like five or 600 kilos per beam or something like that. Um, so what I've done is I've tried to spread the load over four or five beams. Um, I don't, can't find the information out for what uh, each beam is graded to, but I'm assuming it'd have to be 200 kilos at least each. So if I spread it over, you know, three or four beams, five beams, that should be more than enough to winch the, the body off. Um, but even then, uh, I probably won't even try and do the whole body. I might jack the back up with the rotisserie and then lift the front up um, just with the hoist because it'll half the weight. Um, so then I might be looking at like 150, 200 kilos just to lift on the front there. 
I reckon it could probably do the whole whole body now anyway with the bracing and stuff that I've got um, going on. But uh, yeah, you never too you never can be too careful. Last thing I want to do is rip out rip down my new mezzanine level on this shed. Um, so anyway, I'll show you um, what I've set up and. Um, yeah, then hopefully tomorrow I can get started on, on actually mounting the body to the rotisserie. So uh, in this hoist um, is rated to 800 kilos. You can see there um, when you've just got one um, hook going directly to the, the source, then it's um, about 400 kilos, but then you can double the capacity by um, putting this hook on. So usually you can just use this, or if you actually thread the cable through that, it will double the load. So um, I got this through a website called Edison's and it was about a hundred and sixty dollars or something like that So I thought it was pretty reasonable. So I got the Sparky in the other day and he's um, he's got a constant power feed there So it's all hooked up um, All right, so to use it usually you can turn this off um, So it's a safety button, but once that's released you can um, just push down and And then Yeah, so um I'll just leave that hanging there for now, but if I'm not using it, I'll just tuck it up in these seat sections. So anyway, initially what I'd done is um, I bolted, I found these old thick metal clamps, braces, um, L brackets, and you can see there's one in there and also one over here. And they were just sort of in the attempt to try and keep the weight vertically down on these C, C frames. Um, and then I put a reinforcing plate there as well. And that was initially what I'd done. And then I had two thick, solid steel beams that I'd welded together onto those plates. Um, so it was spreading it over two, two beams. But after doing a test, I lifted that um, crate of uh, uh, metal blades there. And that weighs about 125 kilos. And you can see it flex the whole mezzanine level. So what I did is I went to uh, stage two and um, I drilled up in through the mezzanine through these c-sections and i put some uh long threaded bolts on each side and that was sort of in the attempt to hold that base of that um l shape l, l bracket to give it more strength and then to bring the load up into the top of the mezzanine and um, there i've put a long plank of wood i've originally wanted to do steel but i don't have it and eventually i will replace it with a thin probably five or six mil thick of steel plate on the top of that mezzanine to spread the load so i'll go and show you that so she ain't pretty but uh it's doing what it's most uh, it's doing what it's supposed to do and that's spreading the load so in the end i just uh used a bit of chipboard because i thought with these metal plates there it's not really gonna matter if it's not uh solid wood for the main l brackets and i've threaded through i've just used two five mil uh steel plates just to spread the load and then I ran out of steel, but I would like to do that on these ends as well. But I've just bolted them down through the mezzanine just to make sure that it doesn't flex and pull up. So that's uh, distributing the weight now through at least four, maybe five C panels. You could tell straight away when I when I did a test that uh, didn't even flex the whole the beams at all. And um, so yeah, I mean this whole mezzanine level is already carrying a fair bit of weight, so I know that it can. These, uh, it can, I know it can hold a fair bit of weight, so now I'm pretty confident with that that um, it's going to be safe and I can move forward. Okay, um, now that I've uh, installed the bracket system, uh, the hoist on the mezzanine level, um, really all of this is in aid to try and get this rotisserie 
mounted to the body of this uh, WB. So in order to do that, um, if you can see, I've just got some uh, 60 mil tubing, uh, square tubing. And so what I'm gonna have to do is in order to, I don't know if anyone's familiar, but for those who aren't with rotisseries, the way to do it, these arms poking out, um, will attach to the body underneath with the bolt system, but because it's uh, the chassis is in the way, I really have to hoist this up with the winch and then mount a some kind of framing system at the front so that uh, I can weld two, two of these arms on, like this. And these will essentially bolt on to the body and then slide onto this. So it'll be like that. And then I can winch the whole body off the chassis. Um, and then take the chassis out and then I can work on the body with obviously the 360 degrees rotation, which is going to make everything so much easier. Um, but as I've never done this before, I've got no one to show me what, what I'm doing. I've uh, just sort of taken a, a guess at what to use. So I've used this, this um, you can see, 60 mil thing it is. It's around about three or four mil thick, um, which is fine, but my welder only does up, does up to five mil. And uh, this was a tad too big, so it's not gonna fit over those sleeves enough. So I ended up getting this thicker stuff, which actually fits over really snug, but it's around about what's well, six mil or something so my mig welder doesn't do it so i've had to order a new arc welder um which is going to do it and that uses rod and it's probably much better for this thick stuff so that's not going to arrive for another few days so once that arrives i can just start to weld all this stuff up um, but because it's been so long and i haven't got an episode out i've decided just to show you the update and then uh just release the episode and, and basically yeah, show, showcase the shed and everything else and then follow this up next week with the rotisserie um, episode. All right, well, that's it for this episode. I really wanted to show you guys getting this mounted onto the chassis, but I'm just sort of, it's been over a month and I've run out of time. So I'm just going to, there's so much to edit and show everyone from the previous move from that shed to here. So I'm just gonna go and edit it all together, get it out, and, um, and you guys can sort of see what the process has been to get to this point right now. And then hopefully next week I can uh, update you with uh, mounting the shell onto the, onto the rotisserie. So as usual, if you like it, give us a thumbs up and I'll see you next time.